Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is David and welcome back to episode 3 of Grim Tuesdays. So before I get into this video, let me just express my gratitude for the people that have not just supported this brand new series, which I can't lie to you guys, I was really skeptical about whether I should be making this new series. I personally thought that no one would even care. And yes, I know that these videos aren't super popular and that's fine. As I said in my advice video where I talked about the numbers for a channel and I said in that video that I am not expecting to be super popular. I know I'm not super popular on BookTube but that's not really my goal. But I am just really, really thankful for everyone that has watched my videos for my Grim Tuesday series, whether it's this one or the first one or the second one or whatever. So in this episode, episode three, I am going to be reviewing the tale called The Paul Miller's Boy and the Cat. So this retells the tale of an old gentleman who is working in a mill, maybe a windmill of some sort. That's how I pictured it anyway. And because he's old and he doesn't have a wife or a child, but he also has three apprentices working with him. And he knows that, look, I'm getting old now and it's time for me to retire and pass the business on. But he comes to the realization about giving his apprentices a task to perform, to prove their worth to have the company that he's worked so hard to make and run. So he tells his apprentices that whoever brings him the finest horse will actually get ownership of the mill and will also get the privilege of taking care of him but uh, before he kicks the bucket basically. So the first two, the two older ones are brothers and they are really, really selfish. They are really cruel and they look down upon the third apprentice, which I pretty sure isn't a brother. He's not mentioned to be related to these two apprentices, but he is the youngest out of them and his name is Hans. Because he's the youngest, it's described in the book that he is looked down upon because of that reason. And he's looked down upon not just by the two brothers, but the old miller himself. So they all go out together in search of these horses. They know that only one person can win this, so it's a competition between them. And the two brothers ditch Han and while he's sleeping, they go off and they leave him. And when Han wakes up, he discovers that there is this cat that comes to him and this cat talks to him. Like the frog in the Frog Prince, I'm not sure whether this is a spoken word or whether it's a inner monologue or telepathy that the creature has with Han. We don't know what the name of the cat is, it's just referred to as the cat. But the cat mysteriously knows why Han is there, he knows what his quest is, what he seeks. And the cat tells Han that if he comes with her, because this cat is a she, and if Han goes with the cat and is the cat's servant for seven years, yes, this book does contain slavery, that at the end of the seven years, she will give Han this horse. Now, when Han goes to the enchanted castle with the cat. There are all these other cats that are around and they are all sentient. They are having a party and some of them are playing musical instruments like violins and trumpets and they are eating and being merry. Now Han is never really like abused or looked down upon or discriminated against if that made any sense at all. His life as a servant is extremely privileged. He is dressed in all these nice clothes and he can eat all this extravagant amount of food. The only labor that he does for the cat is to chop down some woods 
and to mow a lawn and to also build the cat a small house. And the cat gives him tools that are made from a unusual type of metal. They are made out of silver and gold. Now I believe that the reason why these tools were made of silver and gold is to try to test Han to see whether he would like steal from the cat and take these weapons and tools for himself and run away and try to sell them and all that type of stuff. So I'm pretty sure it was a test that the cat gave Han to try to see whether he would be deceitful and dishonest. But that's not really in Han's personality, he's not that type of individual. So after seven years, he tells the cat, look, look, I've been with you for all this time. Is there any chance I could get my horse now? So the cat takes him to the stables and there's all these horses there. And it's not really described that he picks one or one is selected for Han. But the cat tells him that if he waits three days, the horse will be brought to him. I also think that this is another test given from the cat to try to test if Han has patience. So when Han goes back to the mill, he finds the two brothers and they also have these horses with them. But one of them is blind and the other is lame. And because Han is dressed in his clothes that he was still wearing seven years ago, they've obviously shrunken down and they are really, really grubby and dirty. And the miller and the two brothers look down upon Han and they tell him to eat outside and the two brothers reluctantly do not want Han to sleep in the same bed as them. So he goes off and sleeps in, I think it's like a goose or a duck hut or whatever, where the ducks live and he lays on the hay and makes a bed for himself. And then the very next day, a carriage driven by six horses and it draws up at the miller's place of business and the princess comes out and she presents Han with this horse in front of the brothers and the miller himself and the miller says like this is the finest horse that I've ever seen. I actually f forgot to actually say that Han recognizes this princess as the cat. Now I thought, hang on, is the cat just got some clothes and maybe a wig on and these people are really really stupid that this is just a cat with a wig on. But I'm pretty sure that the cat transformed into a real life human being princess. If that's the case, I have no idea how Han recognized the princess. Maybe because of her personality or her voice. So after the miller says, right, this is the finest horse I've ever seen. And she said, yeah, yeah, it is. But it's Hans, it's his, it's his horse. Basically go off together in the carriage and the little house which Han built for the cat has transformed into this castle and they both live with each other and Han became really, really rich and wealthy. It's not really explains that the princess and Han got married and lived happily ever after. It just implied that they lived in the same house or the same building as each other. It was a really, really nice story. Not the best. This was probably be my least favorite tale from the Grimm brothers. Not saying that I didn't enjoy it, it was a okay story, but for me so far, this story is the lowest rated story for me, personally. But once again, let me know, have you heard of this story? Were you read it as a child? Are you familiar about it? So in episode four, I will be reviewing the three spinsters. So guys, that's all I had to say. Thank you once again for watching this video and thank you for supporting this brand new series that I've actually created and supporting me as a booktuber. So with all that out of the way, have a great day. Read some awesome books and I will see you all in my next video.